invite you to go for a walk. Shall we go for a walk? Come on in. Come on in. Let's go. Come on. So this is my post dog walk breakfast on a Saturday morning, same as yesterday pretty much. I've done my loaded avocado toast, we've got olive oil, salt, chili pepper, seed mix, ducker, and two kinds of microgreens on a seeded sourdough, delicious. I've got my sweet peas soaking here, this afternoon I'm going to do a little bit of seed sowing with the help of my sausages, who are freshly bathed and looking very handsome. Okay, a proper good morning to you, my darlings. That was a scrumptious avocado toast. Very quick and easy to make. Now, I'm gonna make myself a smoothie, but I thought um, what I'm gonna do is actually like bulk prep <laughs> my smoothies for the rest of the week or for the next five mornings that I decide I want to have a smoothie. Because as you can see, <coughs> Here, excuse my squeaky tripod, I do have rather a lot of individual ingredients that I'm putting in my morning smoothies. And the thing that takes the time is just like getting the right amount of this out, taking a spoonful of this, getting a dollop of this. So I thought, why don't I just grab a load of Charlie's old yogurt jars, which I've been saving because I'm a hoarder. Um, and I thought I would make an individual smoothie in each of these jars and then I don't have to get all of this out every single day. Genius, if you ask me. It'll also mean that I don't forget anything, like so often I'll forget uh, maybe my blueberry powder or maybe my collagen or one of my items. So this way I can do it all in one go. Absolutely genius. Very simple idea, I know. Uh, so yesterday I picked up two different types of cauliflower from Dalesford. This is your regular old cauliflower, frozen, and this is, um, what's that funky one called? Is it not romaine? It's the one that's really spiky, because I always think the more variety the better. So yesterday I chopped these up and froze them. Apparently, apparently adding cauliflower, as well as obviously being good for you, is um, a great way of making your smoothies more creamy. So that's gonna be going in there. Um, Strawberries and most berries are not in season at the UK at the moment, so the best way that I like to buy them are in these little organic packs that I pick up on Ocado. But then I actually still have this little stash bag full of the uh, blackberries that Charlie and I picked from the hedgerows in autumn last year, so I'm going to pop some of those in the jars as well. Then I've got my electrolytes from Ancient and Brave, blueberry powder really really packed with antioxidants and very tasty almonds hazelnuts brazil nuts i've not actually tried putting this in a smoothie before so i'm gonna make up this morning smoothie using this before i stick it in all of my jars but this is the coconut milk powder from mud water it's also got mct oil in there and again i think this is going to help it be really nice and creamy 
And then this is a completely flavorless collagen. I saw this brand Ossa on Instagram. You know, I'm just obsessed with bone broths and collagens and all that kind of stuff at the moment. So yeah, I thought I'd add a spoonful of that in. Really hoping that by freezing all of these things, it's not going to reduce their impact, but I've seen, I've seen people doing this online, so I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, and then finally I've got some goji berries and peanut butter. The one thing that I would love to be adding in here that we, I don't think, darling, have we got any bananas? No. Yeah, that we don't have is bananas, but what I could do is always just when we do get some, chop them up and add them into the jars. So this is gonna be a fun little Saturday morning prep task. And at the same time, of course, I'm gonna be making one up in my blender so that I can enjoy one this morning. So that took 10 minutes of prep and here we've got five smoothie jars ready to go for the rest of the week. Hopefully, hopefully this is going to turn out well. I've got all of the same ingredients in here all blended up, so let's give it a try. I'm going to add some chia seeds and my favourite bee pollen as a little nibbly bits on top. very leisurely leaning back in my chair like this in the greenhouse so if I tilt you down you might be able to guess what we're gonna be doing for the next hour this is my sweet pea tray here's one that I did earlier blue Peter style these are the ones that I grew with you it can only be like 10 days ago as you can see we've got some really good little um, seedlings starting to come up these have been germinating in the house, which I would say is around 22 degrees. So they've been nice and warm. Last year, I don't think I germinated my sweet peas indoors last year and they took a lot longer to germinate. So this is definitely the trick. Something <laughs> that I like to do, much to Charlie's dismay, <laughs> is collect loo roll tubes and grow either sweet peas or broad beans in loo roll tubes. Broad beans are not quite so fussy, but sweet peas don't really like their roots to be upskittled once they've started growing a root system. With these, um, the things I just showed you, the root trainers, you can pull them open. So it's not like you have to, it's not like, like in a pot where you have to pull it out. So that's okay. But with a loo roll tube, it's biodegradable as so you can plant the entire thing in the ground, which is great. I like to do both. I've probably only soaked maybe 20 seeds here, and seeing as I've got a few empty root trainers, I might just start by filling up those. Um, and maybe, because we're approaching the middle of February, I feel like January was so slow, and now February is going really quickly. Um, now that we are in mid-feb, we can start to do broad beans as well, which is very exciting. We can also do pak choy, which is one of my favourites to have in a salad, and rainbow chard, which is amazing because it's so colourful, great to stick into so many dishes, um, and I would say it's cut and come again. So the more you pick it, the more it grows, which is just so rewarding. You only really need to sew it once. I've also got a couple of kitchen roll tubes here. Really good for broad beans because broad beans develop a long tap root and it's quite a strong straight root. But not sure what we're gonna have time for today. So let's just start with the sweet peas. And as I said, I'm gonna begin with these two empty rows that I've got in my root trainer.
is a good job done. I think I'm gonna head inside for some lunch now. I appreciate this vlog has been very food heavy and it's not gonna change because we're actually heading to a pop-up in Chipping Norton Town Hall this evening with our favourites Pit Kitchen with Rory and Nathan. So that's gonna be good fun. Um, but for now, I'm gonna head in and I'm gonna roast some of the veggies that I've got kind of left over in the fridge. I've got some pepper, some tomato, I'll have some kale I'm sure from, yes, we've got some kale in the garden, um, an onion and garlic and I think I'm just going to blitz that all up with my homemade veggie stock and make that into a really yummy pasta sauce with loads of parmesan. But as for my sweet peas, as you saw, I watered the soil, I sowed my seeds and then I used my big sieve to like sieve a lot um, more fine soil on top just so that everything is neatly packed down but um, the, the soil isn't too compact so that the little seedlings can wiggle their way through. This is going to go back on the windowsill in our pantry so the warmth will help the seeds germinate. Soaking the seeds before you plant them helps to germinate them as well. The previous ones I did overnight whereas these had probably only been soaking for about six hours but it should be okay um, and then once we've got a few more that have started to come up it's important that I bring them outside because that windowsill it doesn't really have enough light and that does mean that your plants get a little bit leggy which is basically like this one here reaching for the sun you don't want your plants to get too leggy it doesn't encourage them to become too strong so yeah as soon as they're all kind of coming up to like this much or maybe in a few days time once a few of the new ones have germinated they'll come out into the greenhouse where they'll stay until the last frosts yay okay let's go make some lunch <laughs> It's a few hours later. Please excuse this awful lighting. I just wanted to quickly check in before we head over to the pit kitchen. It's gonna be a very fun evening. It's a kind of bring your own drink situation. I think because they are popping up in the town hall, they probably don't have a license, but we love pit kitchen food. You might remember they actually catered for us the night before our wedding. Um, and we have loved visiting their normal spot, which is essentially in a field <laughs> in Chipping Norton. Um, and they're doing a winter special tonight. So we're heading with Rory and Nathan. I've put on my Holland Cooper knit and my new obsession, the Abercrombie trousers. And I'll let you in on a secret. I'm wearing the exact same outfit underneath my thermals and my leggings. I've literally just piled this on top. I've got on a cute new pair of earrings. They're these little um, kind of heart droplets from Astrid and Mew. And I think they are absolutely adorable. And I've got this really sweet new highlight palette here from Clé de Peau, which hopefully I'll get time to show you before my battery dies, which is imminent. How beautiful is this palette. The most gorgeous little highlight. I'm never a huge fan of the brushes that these palettes come with, so I'm just gonna use, ooh, that is intense. Oh my gosh, looks a lot more intense on camera <laughs> than it does in real life. Just to bring a little bit of a glow to my skin. Okay, without further ado, Let's head to Chipping Norton for an evening with the pit kitchen. 
Quite a grand building. This is the Chipping Norton Town Hall. I'm intrigued what this is going to be like. Hello my darlings, I apologise for the awful lighting. Um, it's obviously pitch black outside now. We've just got home after such a lovely evening. Delicious food. I would say that I prefer Pit Kitchen's food when they're serving in the field. I think they are more creative, but they were feeding a lot of people tonight. It was a really fun evening. Um, so back home now, just cleansed. I used the Olivana Rose Water and Chamomile. It's really creamy, really gorgeous. And now I'm going to pop some of my Elemis Rose Serum on. Um, something has arrived. Actually arrived this afternoon, but I just undid it, and I really want to share it with you because it's something that I'm really, really excited about. But I just want to get my evening skincare rolling before I show it to you quickly. I sometimes put a nice calming serum on before my skin and me, just as like a mini barrier, especially if my skin's feeling a bit sensitive. It's just feeling a bit tight today. So skin and me daily doser. We love. I got a new one a couple of days ago, so it's got a full month's supply on there. And I just love how my skin looks and I'm in a really good routine with this. I didn't take it with me on holiday because I don't like to use strong actives when I'm in the sun. Um, but I feel like I can see my skin texture improving day by day or night by night now that I'm back into my habit of using this. And I like to leave it a good 10 minutes as the only thing on my skin before I do my night cream. Reminder, Josie Glow will get you your skin and me for 4 dollars for the first month, which is wonderful. I'll leave that link down below. So let's go next door. Hopefully the lighting is a tiny bit better. So my delivery um, is from a company called Grounding Well grounding well and yes it's a product for indoor grounding so you might remember that I um I think it started when I was listening to a podcast probably and they were talking about the benefits of grounding and grounding is quite literally connecting yourself to the earth so obviously the, be the best way you can do that is by being outside bare feet but it obviously doesn't work on concrete you have to be like actually connecting to the earth and the whole idea is that the earth has a negative charge. Our bodies, well, think about a house, right? I think it was in the 1930s, was it, that we got electricity? I don't know, I'll put the year on the screen here. And what they realized was that you needed to, to ground the electricity into the earth. So houses and other buildings have a grounding rod that literally connects them to the earth, that grounds them. And that is to stabilize the electrical charge. Well, our bodies are really quite electrical as well. We definitely have a charge and an energy. And since we have become disconnected with the earth, whether that's through rubber soled shoes, which we all wear, um, or whether it's from walking on concrete all the time, staying in buildings all the time, when was the last time, think about it, that you actually touched the earth? When did you last connect? Either by hugging a tree and touching nature or being barefoot. I bet it was quite a while ago, unless you're lucky enough to live somewhere wonderful. Um, so yeah, our bodies, our charge has been <laughs> rising and this has been connected to, I'm not gonna say proven because a lot of these things, they just can't prove it. Um, but there's been a connection between when we are grounding to reductions in inflammation in our body. And inflammation is the cause of so many things, whether it's pain or like heart problems or even diabetes. So many of our illnesses, cancer even, has been connected to inflammation. So anything that we can do to bring down inflammation in our body, it could be that you've got like sore joints, sore knees, that's an inflammation. They have connected grounding, i.e. reducing the charge within your body, to reductions in inflammation. It's something that I can't explain that well, but I would so recommend doing more research into it. I should have just read this. <laughs> in 
general, the more time we spend grounded, the better. Grounding is particularly good for us during sleep as our bodies spend this time repairing, rebuilding and recharging our energy. Being grounded during sleep creates the optimal conditions for this process and allows us to sleep deep and wake up feeling amazing. Grounding is an important aspect for achieving good health, connecting your body directly to the Earth's natural healing energy field that's essential for all living beings to maintain electrical balance. It says on here, proven benefits of grounding, reduced inflammation, more restful sleep, reduction in chronic pain, improved blood, for, but blood flow, reduced stress and anxiety, reduced electromagnetic interference, normalized cortisol rhythms, increased energy, improved mood, reduction in PMS symptoms, decreased muscle, muscle tension, reduction in headaches, speed up wound healing. Oh my God, there are just, <laughs> there are just so, so many benefits. Uh, so, I've had a delivery because as much as I love to spend time barefoot outside and hugging trees or wild swimming, because obviously swimming outside in the ocean or a lake is amazing grounding because your whole body is connected to the earth. Sadly, we just can't do it very often. And the longer time you spend grounded, the better. So summer months, I'll be out there barefoot. But I found this company called Grounding Well and they have got products that allow you to be grounded by literally plugging um, mats essentially in because like I said at the beginning with our houses having an earthing rod we can connect to the earth's negative charge via our plugs this is the grounding prong of your plug so what I've got here will it tell me anymore um, yeah so you plug the grounding cord into your product you plug it in and then when you are touching it, either sleeping on it or you have your feet on it when you're at your desk or at your makeup station, I'm gonna put mine probably at my makeup station. I think I spend more time sat there like drying my hair and doing my makeup than I do at my desk, which I think is <laughs> saying something, but I'm normally like, I normally move around the house with my laptop. I'm not like at my desk, but this is really interesting. This is a sheet. I thought it was gonna be stiff, which I was a bit worried about. Um, but this is a sheet, it literally feels like a cotton sheet, which you can plug in and ground yourself while you're sleeping. Wowza, unlucky Charlie, it looks like it's only big enough for one person. Um, but because it's literally cotton, it's hopefully not gonna be feelable underneath my sheets. I don't know if I have to lie directly on this, or if I put it underneath my under sheet, we shall see. And then this is like a rubber mat, which I'm gonna roll out and put under where my feet will be at my vanity area. Yeah, so it's like a little rubber mat. How clever is that? Absolutely genius. Um, it's about 10 p.m. at night now, so I'm not gonna actually do this now, but I will <laughs> do this in the morning. Um, or maybe what I'll do, just for the sake of keeping it all together, is I'll insert the clips of me setting these up now um, so that you can see them all getting set up. I think it's so exciting and I'm really looking forward to just setting it up and being able to ground without even thinking about it. So there we go, that's my latest little, I'm not gonna say crazy or woo woo, but you know what I'm like. <laughs> I love to try these things and I don't think it hurts. I think it's, I mean, it makes sense. To me, it really does make sense. But yeah, I need to check if I actually need to, to touch that bed sheet or if I can put it underneath my thingamajig. Ah, uh, it does say it's recommended to expose your skin directly onto the grounding sheets. Hmm. Maybe I'll put it at the end of the bed so that my feet are on it while I'm sleeping. We shall see. I'll have a play around and I'll update you in the morning. Good morning, my darlings. It's Sunday morning now. We had such a lovely evening with Rory and Nathan last night, and I'm feeling a little bit tired this morning, a little bit um, like I could have done with a few more hours in bed, but Charlie and I have got a busy-ish day today. We are heading out later on for a Sunday roast, which I can't wait for, with Phil and Hannah and their children at the Black Horse, which is one of our new favorites. But before that, We've got a lot of um, flower bed prep to do. This is the time of year as a gardener 
that you basically just have to put the time in to prepare your beds ready for getting them ready for when the blooms all get planted out after the last frost so it's kind of the least rewarding and least glamorous part of gardening but it's very important that prep work is very important and on that note today finally we've got a blog post going live which you guys have been asking for for years quite literally and it is our blog post on step by step how to create a herbaceous border I'll pop a photo of our herbaceous border in full bloom up on the screen here so you can see what I'm talking about. The blog post contains everything from a planting plan to the individual plants that we recommend for a traditional English herbaceous border and you really don't need a big garden to create one of these um, because as you might remember last summer we installed one at George and Petra's house. There's just a few things that you need to know with regards to how to position the plants, um, how to put one together, and you can do it yourself. You don't need to employ a big team to come in and do it for you. And it's really good fun. I always think anything that gets you outside in nature is fantastic. Don't really need it straight after moisturizer, but it's just a joy to use. Okay, you guys don't need to see me doing my makeup routine because I've shared it in quite a few vlogs recently. So I'm gonna get my makeup on and I will see you out in the garden. of hard work later and I can show you a little before and after so this is one that we haven't tackled yet so we're having to be quite careful because as you can see there's dahlia tubers starting to come out there's peonies in the one that we've just done um, but you can see it's just looking a little bit sad and then here we've got some nice juicy topsoil and bark mulch which we have shoveled just in mulch, just bark mulch oh, okay it's like a fine you order it every year mm -hmm. It's like a fine composted bark mulch, so I think there's leaves and stuff in there. Yeah. Um, but it's good for a number of reasons. Reason number one, it obviously adds nutrients back into the beds. Mm. These beds in particular are obviously quite new. Yeah. So the soil does need need it, and it certainly benefits every year. Yeah. Secondly, you obviously add a nice layer of protection because we've still got a lot of frost around. Yeah. In an ideal world, we'd have probably done this either early in the year or late last year. Yeah. And it also then looks very tidy better. which yeah. is a huge benefit because obviously with all the irrigation mm. and bits and pieces it's nice to just tidy it up we we'll probably try and do this normally pre-spring we normally do it in the spring and in the winter but we're kind of doing it half and half now so mm -hmm. i think probably not do it again yeah but, but now is a good time to do it because you can see if i show you a little example where did i see one around here um some of the ah here we go some of the peonies you can see these little Ah, here's an example. Little tiny purple shoots coming out the ground. They are peonies and they won't really like it if they get terribly frosty. So what we're doing now is essentially adding a little blanket as well to help protect anything that might have got a bit carried away and started to come up. I'm hoping a lot of my dahlias will have survived the winter, but I did do, as you know, a Farmer Gracie order a couple of weeks ago. So I'll have a few more arriving soon, which I'll do in pots. And while I've got the camera out, I just wanted to show you some horseradish root there we go that's ready to be harvested and we can make our very own horseradish did you know that that is what a horseradish looked like a little bit like a carrot definitely gonna have to dig that up because it is well and truly that's rooted what most wasabi looks like yeah. because most wasabi that we eat is actually horseradish yeah with green food coloring <laughs> yeah very true right on to bed number two
is a fantastic job done. I feel like we've had a real workout out in the garden, out in nature, the best way. And now it's nearly half 12. We're going out for a, a roast at half two. Um, but I have not had any breakfast yet, so I'm literally just gonna do some boiled eggs and soldiers because I'm a child and that is what I am craving today. We've got this really nice seeded sourdough, which I'm gonna turn into some little soldiers. The sun has come out. It's gonna be a really, really nice afternoon. Charlie's got the old Defender charging, so maybe we'll drive out in that. If not, I need to drive that car tomorrow because my car is still broken down in the Delsford car park, which is not ideal. Hopefully they don't tow it or anything. Fingers crossed. Um, so yeah, time for some breakfast. Two eggs. Six and a half minutes in boiling water should be the perfect cookedness. We don't want any runny whites because, quite frankly, that makes me gag. <laughs> I've even found a little sunny spot, Dexy. Look at my boy. I love it when the sun shines in the kitchen and I'm next to the Arga. It's the best place in the world, Mummy. You should try it sometime. It's really comfortable. Okay, so while my eggs are cooking, I'm gonna try this little tulip tip that I've seen online. When your tulips get a little bit sad, which can often happen um, if they go into shock from changing temperature from being outside or in a garden center, to being in your nice toasty warm kitchen. So the trick is to take, to take about a centimeter off the bottom and then roll them up quite tightly in some paper. I've got this uh, literally like Amazon parcel lining paper. You wrap them up quite tightly in the paper so that they're upright and then leave them soaking in some water for a couple of hours. So seems like a really easy hack. Let's give it a go. So these are my slightly sad tulips. Something else you can do is remove the um, leaves if the leaves are looking a little bit sad as well. So let's do that. take a centimeter off the bottom, at least a centimeter. And now I'm gonna roll them up in this brown paper, nice and tightly. I filled this jug with some water and I'm just gonna pop them in here for the next couple of hours. Now hopefully by the time we get back from our roast, they will have absorbed all the water, gained a little bit of um, stiffness, <laughs> and we'll have some nice perky tulips. We shall see. I love trying out these Instagram flower hacks to see if they work. Hello, it's Josie from the future here. I wanted to finish my little tulip hack, um, but as you're about to find out, yesterday for current me, today for you watching is about to get crazy not in a good way um i'm not normally able to foreshadow in vlogs like this this is because i'm filming the next day um but let's just say that sorting out my tulips <laughs> was the very last thing on my mind but it's the next day the situation is under control um, and we're gonna see if our hack has worked. So, they've been in the water actually for a long time, nearly 24 hours, so hopefully they've drunk it all up and we'll have some non-floppy tulips. <laughs> Why do these things always work out for people on Instagram, but when I try them, it's an epic fail. That is considerably worse than when I started this hack. I'm gonna blame it on the fact that the tulips are old. Um, I'm gonna have to find a stiff kind of jar to put them in. That is hilarious. Okay, back to yesterday, back to Sunday. Buckle up because things are about to get crazy. Okay, 
world's quickest outfit update because we are running a little bit late. I have popped on a Holland Cooper roll neck. Hair is still up in a bun because gardening all morning. Abercrombie jeans, which I'm trying to style in as many different ways as possible. Doesn't look very flattering from this angle, but I think they do look nice. Um, and then I've got this very spoily new jacket, which is from Celine, a real splurge. Okay, let's go. This is not quite the update that I thought I was going to be sharing with you. Um, we're not having a Sunday roast. I'm currently at the roadside, halfway between um, our route and Banbury Hospital. Um, <laughs> obviously, I'm, I'm not going to give away any information because it's not our information to share, but Charlie and I were just driving to the um, pub from our house and we, Charlie actually spotted a lady at the side of the road and she was not in a good way and um, obviously pulled over, went to assist the lady, I called an ambulance, um, the ambulance instructed us what to do, we've got some first aid stuff in the car, thank goodness, we will need to replenish all of it now. Um, but yeah, we've basically just been at the side of the road helping this lady um, for the last half an hour. A couple of chaps who were also driving the road stopped and they helped us, thank goodness. After I'd called the ambulance and they told us a few things that we needed to do to keep her stable. Also thank goodness that we did the first aid course. Um, I would so highly recommend everyone does a first aid course. You never know when or how it's gonna come in handy. I would also recommend that everyone has a first aid bag and a coat and wellies in their car. I was not wearing a practical outfit, but luckily was able. we were both able to put wellies on um, and help this lady. Then I called the ambulance again to find out how long they were going to be. And then they told me that the ambulances were really stretched today and it could be up to a couple of hours. So we'd by this point managed to get hold of this lady's husband. Um, 10 minutes later he arrived. So now Charlie and one of the two chaps that also came to um, assist they have taken the lady to our nearest emergency room. I took the lady's children home um, that had come with their father and um, yeah, Charlie has just left the hospital. The lady is with her husband, she's being seen to and um, the boys are gonna, we're basically meeting in this middle point here, the boys are gonna drop Charlie back with me and we're gonna be a couple of hours late but we're gonna head back to um the black horse for our sunday roast but yeah my goodness um not my not my story to tell and i'm obviously not giving any information about what the lady's predicament was because it's very personal um but yeah first aid kit in your car first aid training so important you never know when you're going to need it so hopefully charlie will be with me soon we've shared our contact details with the family if they want to update us then they can do appreciate these matters are really private um but yeah i wanted to update you in case those little snippets of information ever help anybody else in future so Oh, and Charlie's just so good in an emergency. He literally knew what to do straight away, pulled over, got the first aid kit out, told me, Josie, get on the ambulance straight away. And it was like, it was like he was blinkered, just so practical, keeping the lady talking um, and just took charge of the situation straight away. Very, very impressed with Charlie's actions. So, yeah. Mm, that's what's happened. I hope she's okay. We have taken Bertie hostage. He's coming with us. <laughs> Sweet. So that was a delicious roast at um, 
black horse, definitely worth the wait. We were pretty ravenous by the time we got there. We are now at Rose Cottage at Phil and Hannah's and um, everyone's just run inside to get a few more layers and we're gonna take Bertie for a quick little walk to stretch our legs. I definitely feel like we need to digest because did you see that cauliflower cheese? It was delicious. What have you got? What have you got? Back to the cosy living room. We're gonna get the fire lit, kettles on, and it's time for some pudding. eight Charlie and I oh I've just realized my belt is undone because I had to undo it in the car after that rather gargantuan cauliflower cheese half past eight we are home now back with the boys and I think we're gonna head straight to bed um, we just had a message from the lady's husband and had an update that she's stable she's been taken to the hospital in Oxford where they can give her the care that she needs um, and the husband he said in in the message how grateful he was for mine and Charlie's help and said without a doubt that we saved her life today which is quite crazy to think um, yeah so quite an insane day um, definitely not what you expect on a Sunday morning when you're off to a Sunday roast in the Cotswolds but yeah we're gonna be buying an even more substantial first aid kit to keep in the car anyone that wants to learn anything from this video first aid kit in the car get yourself on a first aid course because I, just, I can't believe it like we only did that course what six weeks ago and we've already had to use it thank goodness um, I think we're both in a little bit of shock but just really glad that hopefully she's going to be okay the fact that she's stable and she's in good hands um yeah but I thought I would update you seeing as I let you know what was going on earlier so there we go I'm gonna head upstairs and um take my makeup off get a fairly early night I think I might need to take <laughs> something to help us fall asleep. I mean, the adrenaline is still a little bit crazy, but there we go. Not what I thought I'd be updating you on in this vlog. <laughs> I love how it goes from nice, calm gardening, <laughs> sorting out the mulch, to literally saving someone's life. That is the joy of life, I guess. Anyway, I will see you in the next one. <laughs> Good night.